Since the very start, Africa has been considered an uncivilized continent whose people don't know what to do. It's a perception and stereotype that the West has tried to spread all around. That's why no one in the West knows the rich history of Africa and how it was the first ever civilization that shaped the rest of the world. The West has been doing so for a long time, but now enough is enough. The African leaders are rising and exposing the real history which excludes Africa. If it does show Africa, it is shown as a violent and uncivilized continent where there is poverty, issues, and nothing good. That's why people in the West feel it is essential to make policies for African countries, because they cannot do this by themselves. Children in the West are taught this, but now, this part of history cannot be hidden nor tempered anymore. Various African leaders have started speaking, showing the West and Europe that Africans have been more civilized than they are. They have made it clear that the West should stop lecturing. Instead, it should focus on its own matters. So what part of history does the West hide that everyone should know? Let's know about it in this video. An African leader took the mic and spoke his mind when various European leaders were sitting beside him, listening to him keenly. Nobody was expecting that he could say things many European leaders would find bitter to swallow. He said that instead of the European Union lecturing African countries and telling them what they should do and what they should not, each of them should be able to express their beliefs freely. He continued and said that it's important to avoid Europe assuming a dominant role over African countries, and African leaders should ensure that. Since all countries in the world are equal, as every human is equal to every human, no Western country should be allowed to have patronizing behavior. It's a behavior which is inherent in former colonizers when they feel they are more civilized and the country they are colonizing should be thankful to them. He further continued and said that power, which is considered to make countries superior, does not exist either. There are no superpowers. The examples of Afghanistan, Syria, and Iraq demonstrate the consequences when any nation asserts superpower status. He said that instead of clinging to the idea of superpowers and spheres of influence, European countries should foster cooperation based on equality. It should acknowledge that conscientious individuals exist globally, even if they don't hold positions of power. Without being influenced by any powerful country, he said that the interpretation that African nations refuse to condemn Russia is not accurate. He made it clear that African leaders don't want to be manipulated in Europe's foreign policy maneuvers. He stressed the fact that African leaders seek the freedom to decide when and if to condemn independently. While pointing and seeing the Western leaders in the eye, he said that it's essential for them to shift their perspective and recognize African equality. That's when he delivered a blow by saying that African leaders may offer more advanced thinking on how to address global issues than European leaders. Single-handedly, he destroyed the entire West's tactical foreign policy of blackmailing African countries and getting what it wanted. To understand what he meant, you have to know a bit about Africa, its rich history and civilization. To begin, it's crucial to understand that Africa is not a single country, but a diverse continent enriched with various cultures, religions, tribes, sub-tribes, customs, and beliefs. Referring to Africa as a singular entity is not only disrespectful, but also overlooks the profound richness of its diverse identity. It's important to acknowledge that differences give rise to distinct perspectives, cultures, and ways of life, presenting both strengths and challenges for each nation. Just as a German, English, or Norwich native would identify themselves as by their specific country and city of origin, not their continent, the same people in African countries identify themselves as the citizens of those countries. However, Europe tried to change it. It considered every person living in any of the 54 countries as an African. It's because the connection between Europe and Africa has deep historical roots, largely shaped by the era of colonial rule, during which many African nations endured immense suffering under the rule of the colonial powers. Africans fought tirelessly, making significant sacrifices to liberate themselves from the chains of colonialism. However, in the post-colonial era, the relationship was marked by the issue of aid dependence, with Africa heavily relying on its former colonial masters to sustain their governments. 
a dynamic that persists to this day. Unfortunately, even in the 21st century, the Western world continues to intervene in the internal affairs of African nations without much hesitation, while Africans seem to accept this interference with resignation. While the European Union and Africa strive to establish a new partnership, instances of defamation, harassment, and intimidation from the European Parliament have caused concerns, displaying a blatant lack of respect for Africans, their governments, and their institutions. This condescending behavior raises questions about the nature of the proposed partnership. Africans have made significant progress in understanding what serves their interests best. Some African countries had already established democratic systems long before the introduction of modern democracy by the West. Had the colonial powers not disrupted this progress, Africans might have developed strong democratic systems tailored to their unique contexts. For instance, the Gada system in the Oromo community of Ethiopia represents a complex governance structure that respects the rights of its members, ensures smooth leadership succession, and facilitates peaceful transitions across generations. Other traditional systems also promote participation, transparency, and accountability. One of the serious literature crimes Europe did was to write African history as it liked. It wrote what it understood about Africa, not what was the reality. Whatever the European historians could find, they wrote about it, and what they did not see, they considered it absent in Africa. It's quite irrational to allow a colonial power to write the history of the colonized states and consider it authentic. The assumption that African governments are not accountable to their citizens, and therefore the civilized world, must export democracy as a commodity, undermines the fundamental principles of democracy. In doing so, the West neglects the historical context in which democracy evolved in their own societies and overlooks the unique socio-economic, political, and cultural dynamics of African nations. This lack of understanding hampers the progress toward consolidating democracy and impedes the potential for constructive cooperation between Africa and the West. In a multipolar world, Europe must reconsider its approach to Africa. Recognizing that Africa has various partners with whom it can engage, the notion that the EU is the sole partner for Africa is gradually evolving and should be acknowledged. Hence, the criticisms directed by the EU towards Africa regarding its relations with China appear baseless. Africa is diversifying its partnerships, and this diversification is already underway. Relationships that lack equality and respect are likely to end and prove unsustainable. African nations uphold their dignity and the narrative propagated by the European Parliament to criticize and demonize African governments is simply unacceptable. Moderate MEPs who genuinely understand Africa and its situation must ensure that their voices resound clearly. It is essential to understand that the aim is not to avoid criticism, but to foster positive and constructive engagement. You should know that the narrative of Africa has historically been obscured for two significant reasons. Firstly, due to the deplorable legacy of slavery, and secondly, as a result of the colonial era. European powers deliberately propagated an image of Africa as a desolate and backward continent, justifying the horrendous enslavement of 12.5 million individuals transported across the Atlantic Ocean between 1501 and 1866. Following the abolition of the slave trade, European colonial forces surveyed a vast, empty African map dividing it like slices of a pizza among themselves. Germany, you take Tanganyika, they would proclaim. France, Senegal is yours. This means that the African history people read in Europe is tempered, and there exists another history, a very real history, of empires rising and falling, of civilizations prospering and declining, a history that people in the West are largely unfamiliar with. You must know that in Africa, there were sophisticated societies. Africans were just as curious about what lay beyond the proverbial mountain as anyone else. The first iron technology in the world emerged in Africa in 1800 BC, even before India and the Middle East. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. What's more, 
Almost all the gold utilized in Europe between 1000 AD and 1500 AD originated from one of three regions in West Africa. The wealthiest individual in recorded history was the emperor of Mali, Mansa Musa, with an estimated net worth of approximately $400 billion. Here it becomes clear that the things the Westerners don't know about Africa do exist. Various stereotypes about Africa have been existing in the West, clouding how people think about Africans. Throughout history, European imperialism used liberal and paternalistic justifications to depict Africa as less civilized and its people as incapable of self-civilization. In the past, the French and Portuguese attempted to civilize Africa through colonization, while the Belgian artist Hergé portrayed Africans as childlike in his work Tintin in the Congo. Similarly, the Germans attributed African accomplishments to a Hemitic race with European origins. Stereotypes about Africans as illegal immigrants and beggars are prevalent in certain Italian circles, while negative news coverage influences the Polish perspective on Africa. During the 19th century in North America, scientific racists like Josiah C. Knott and George Glidden likened Africans to non-human apes, using this comparison to justify their inferior status. On the other hand, the United States commonly perceives Africa as primitive and plagued by disease, with Africans seen as particularly vulnerable to illness. These stereotypes are shaped by various themes. Many people imagine Africa as primarily uninhabited savannas teeming with wild animals or as densely forested areas. The continent is often associated with poverty and considered underdeveloped, even though many African countries have rapidly growing economies. Misconceptions about technology also persist, with some assuming that Africans lack access to modern technology. Moreover, Africa is frequently mistaken as a single entity, with people often assuming that all Africans belong to one ethnic group and speak a single language known as African. In reality, Africa is a continent comprising 54 distinct states, boasting a rich linguistic diversity with over 1,000 languages spoken. And then there is the role of Western media in showing Africa as uncivilized. The livelihoods of approximately 700 million individuals spanning 54 nations, having diverse cultures, religions, political systems, and economies, are consistently undermined by external influences. Africa's abundant natural resources, which are scarcely accessible to its own people, face jeopardy due to the relentless consumption habits of the Western world. This crucial reality often goes unnoticed or is deliberately disregarded by consumers in Europe and North America. Africa, its continent, and its descendants are derogatorily reduced to a mere hub of disease, savagery, animism, war, famine, despotism, and poverty. Perpetuating a pervasive narrative of unworthiness and subhumanity, often portrayed through distressing images of malnourished children with flies swarming around their faces and protruding bellies. Meanwhile, Africa's strategic importance to industrialized nations and its crucial role in global development and wealth often receive little acknowledgement from the Western media. Well, it's because people in the West have been told about how uncivilized Africans are. Therefore, they are more interested in watching African poverty, diseases, wildlands, and crises than the developed part of Africa. The contributions of Africa to world technology and capitalism exacted through notorious treaties and agreements have provided little direct benefit to its indigenous communities. The resources, lands, people, and cultures of Africa have been exploited, with the resulting disruption of cultural norms and values sanctioned by institutions across European societies. The Western media often portrays the African continent as an outlying entity rather than an integral part of the global ecosystem. It dismisses its indigenous populations as inconsequential and disposable, warranting either surgical removal or resigned acceptance of their biblical destiny as the cursed descendants of Ham. Despite this defamation, Africa exudes a welcoming and hospitable nature, an aspect frequently highlighted by the Western media through portrayals of adventure, safaris, natural wonders, big game hunting, and resort destinations akin to Sun City. Undoubtedly, Much of the world's knowledge and foundations can trace their origins back to Africa, particularly the ancient civilization of Egypt, which laid the groundwork for human activity in various domains. Africa's substantial contributions to intellectual and human development, including mathematics, science, architecture, medicine, 
language, and spirituality are undeniable. However, negative media representations persist, perpetuating demeaning stereotypes through terms such as hut, dark, tribe, King Kong, jungle, savage, underdeveloped, and cannibal whenever Africa is the subject. Africa. From the historical issuance of the Papal Bull in 1455 to contemporary news organizations, a consistent policy of negative reporting has colored the depiction of Africa, painting a picture of a region lacking in culture, history, tradition, and humanity. The Western media often gathers images of fear and evil when portraying Africa and its people, depicting the continent as a marginalized land. Despite its wealth, countries like Zaire remain impoverished, their riches mercilessly extracted by external powers. The modern media, with its unparalleled global reach, wields the power to instantly broadcast news and images, shaping perceptions of Africa worldwide. Despite its rich cultural heritage and contributions to human civilization, Africa continues to be portrayed negatively with images of famine, warlords, epidemics, and tribal conflicts dominating the narrative. People in the West must understand that African countries would have been developed if the European colonial powers had not robbed them. The skyscrapers and modern world Europe presents have been built on the resources looted and plundered from Africa. Using tactics and brutalities, the Western countries developed them by importing slaves, and later, they robbed African countries of their natural resources. The reason why most African countries could not develop is not because Africans are uncivilized, but because they were robbed. There have been comprehensive reports on how Africa developed Europe and made it what it is today. It does not take much time to understand that European countries never had the means to develop, using their own wealth. And today, after centuries of robbing, if European countries call Africa an uncivilized continent, it's an irony. The notion that European countries have disregarded the advancements of African civilizations finds its roots in historical biases and prejudices that have influenced their perceptions of Africa. This denial has been sustained through various channels, including historical accounts, societal frameworks, and entrenched racial discrimination. Throughout history, European nations have often depicted African societies as primitive and underdeveloped, perpetuating stereotypes that undermined the cultural legacies, social systems, and sophisticated governance structures that existed in various African civilizations. The negation of African civilization was reinforced during the colonial era, which systematically dismantled native cultural customs, languages, and institutions, often in favor of imposing European norms and values. The Eurocentric perspective through which history was recorded and taught further enforced the belief that African cultures were inferior and less advanced compared to European societies. Additionally, the idea of the white man's burden further reinforced the denial of African civilization. This concept was used to justify the colonization of African nations by portraying it as a mission to bring progress, development, and modernization to what were perceived as uncivilized societies. In other words, Europeans would consider colonizing African countries a favor, an act of selflessness. During the colonial period, European powers often justified their expansion as a mission to civilize and develop Africa. This narrative concealed the exploitation of Africa's abundant resources, including minerals, land, and labor, primarily for the benefit of European economies and industries. The rhetoric of civilizing missions and the alleged improvement of indigenous populations obscured the systematic exploitation of African resources and labor. It perpetuated the narrative that colonization was advantageous for African nations. This viewpoint ignored the harmful consequences of colonization, including the suppression of native cultures, the disruption of traditional ways of life, and the exploitation of natural resources without equitable benefits for the local communities. Did you know that Africans were the first people to develop any form of civilization? Isn't it true that whatever the West is today is because of the earlier civilization in Africa? Let us know your thoughts on how people in the West can be taught the true history in which Africa and Africans are at the center. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization.
history and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.